After last week's video on helium mining and hotspots, I realized there were more questions I should have addressed. So here's part two. On the screen are the questions I answered in last week's video. So pause this video if you have questions about helium mining and how to get started and click on the screen for that video if needed. I'll also put the link in the description below. The topics of this video will be more intermediate. So if you have a good grasp of helium mining, let's get started. Hey, this is Rochelle and welcome to multiple passive streams of income. Now, last week I spoke about the additional steps New Yorkers have to take to convert HNT tokens to cash. And this is because there are seven states that do not allow their residents to open Binance.us accounts. So the first question is, why can't we use Coinbase? Well, HNT is not listed on Coinbase at this time, but hopefully Coinbase will add this token in the near future, which would make our Helium lives so much easier. Now I didn't explain much about the distance between hotspots, so I wanna go into more details about that. I mentioned that helium.place has a red hexagon and surrounding green circle plotted on their map. And I explained that hotspots located inside the red hexagon aren't optimal. Hotspots within 300 meters of each other reduce each hotspot's potential. 300 meters is about 0.2 miles. A mile is about 20 city blocks. So 300 meters is about four city blocks. It's not that hotspots can't coexist, but it's been stated that they will then share rewards, reducing each hotspot's output. So utilize helium dot places, red hexagon and surrounding green circle to determine if your location may infringe upon an existing hotspot. You can remove the red hexagon and surrounding gray circle by clicking on the hamburger menu icon at the top left and toggling off the sweet spot and location red zone. I also didn't mention last week that there are companies that you can get free hotspots from. Google, Helium hotspot sharing companies or something like that to see a list. NobleIoT.com is one of the companies I hear mentioned a lot. Supposedly they send hotspots out for free, but there will be an 80-20 split with them getting 80% and you getting 20%. And I've heard people say they may exercise this option while they're waiting to get the back ordered hotspots. Again, just wanted to make sure people are aware of this option. Now let's get into some elephant in the room topics. I wanna talk about light devices, but let's talk about how you accumulate HNT coins first, which will lead into why light hotspots are being added to the Helium network. So how does the network actually work? You can go to helium.com forward slash mine, and that will show you the five ways to earn HNT. So there are challengers, proof of coverage, witnesses, network data transfer, and consensus groups. Now the diagram to the right shows an IOT device that's item four. So let's say for example, that's a car sensor or a scooter rental that went past your hotspot. So if your hotspot is item number two, you are earning HNT for the network data transfer. As part of the Helium network proof of coverage, hotspot one is chosen by the network to issue a challenge on hotspot two and will earn HNT for that challenge. Proof of coverage is a process that validates wireless coverage. So inclusive to the proof of coverage process, hotspot three is a witness and gains HNT. Witnesses 
monitor and report proof of coverage activity on the network. I know this is a little bit technical, but it's this proof of coverage process that allows hotspot owners to earn HNT five different ways. So you can see why it's suggested to try to create a network of at least three hotspots with neighbors, friends, and family if you live in a lone wolf area and then to keep those hotspots at least 300 meters away from each other if you decide to do that. Now, the fifth way to earn HNT is consensus groups, and that's a random selection which most hotspots are not involved with. So this leads us to the light devices. Helium has revealed their roadmap towards light devices, which really means a data-only hotspot. Their explanation is that as the network grows, hotspots will fall out of sync. To combat against this, consensus work will be moved over to validators and existing hotspots can be converted to light devices and also light devices will eventually be available on the market to buy. So basically, when the Helium network matures to this point, hotspots will only gain HNT for data transfer events. On the screen shows how each hotspot will handle the five ways to earn HNT when light devices hit the network and then when validators hit the network. According to Helium's milestone schedule, June is expected to introduce light devices to the blockchain. And this summer, light devices will be able to generate HNT for device transfer packets. So far, the milestones have not indicated a date for the introduction of light hotspots, so more to come, and we'll see very soon if these milestones stay on schedule. Another elephant in the room topic is halving, and why do cryptocurrencies have in the first place? It's said that halving makes tokens scarce and ultimately more valuable, which helps to increase the token price. Another explanation is that it rewards early adopters so the risk takers get paid more for taking the extra risk. If we look at Helium's halving schedule, after August 1st of this year, the next halving will occur in year five, and that will be August 2023. Although halving will cut rewards in half, HNT's price increases over time will help to absorb lost revenues due to halving and vice versa. If the price decreases, that's going to highlight the upcoming halving event. There's also the proposed 5G second wireless Helium network that has teamed up with FreedomFi. And it is projected that system will cost between $1,000 to $5,000 to implement. And there will be modification kits on sale that will allow you to support 5G from your existing HNT mining hotspot. The Helium 5G network will be exclusive to select U.S. cities at first, and then it will expand to other cities and countries. So let's end the video with a fun fact. The founders of Helium are Amir Halim, Sean Carey, and Sean Fanning, who happens to be the founder of Napster. Now, OGs like me know Napster very well, but my younger audience may not know Napster, but it was basically a peer-to-peer -peer music swapping service before crypto, before YouTube, Pandora, Spotify, Tidal, and that's just naming a few of the streaming music services out today. But it was a way for us to obtain free music on the internet. Now that caused lawsuits because Napster was accused of infringing on the copyrights of recording artists. 
Metallica and Dr. Dre were among many lawsuits filed against Napster, which was eventually shut down in 2001. So as you can see, Mr. Fanning's experience with his peer-to-peer -peer technology has served him well and has allowed him to transfer that expertise to the Helium network. I'm gonna be so happy when I get my first HNT hotspot and I'll definitely keep doing follow-up videos. If I miss something, please let me know in the comments. Please share this video with your family and friends. I would appreciate if you like or dislike the video, all interaction counts. Please subscribe and comment and click the notification bell after you subscribe so you're notified when I drop new videos. As always, thanks for your time as I know you could be any other place right now. Take care.